Hello everyone, it's Homestar92, and welcome to more Let's Play Paper Mario. In the last part, we met a nice Koopa with a blue shell who needs some help getting his shell back. We were introduced to the fuzzy type of enemy. Um, we learned a little bit about action commands, and we just all around did some interesting things. So, in this part, we are going to hopefully recover that shell once and for all. And... I will have to be very careful, because I don't want to lose it. Of course, I think this is pretty much scripted. And he is going to hide out in these trees. And I did not know Fuzzies could actually talk. So now we have to watch. And sorry I'm not talking much, I'm focused on not losing the shell, and it's definitely in this one. And he's gonna make us do it again, because it's never that easy. Probably you'll have to do it three times. Because that tends to be the standard for games like this, and now he's in this one. And I'm assuming third time will be the final one. And I believe he's in the third tree. And I was correct. And he just kind of gives us Cooper's shell. And we don't even have to fight him. But I am going to go ahead and hit all of these trees, because you never know when you'll get a fun item drop. And here comes Cooper. And... He's going to show those fuzzies what's what, except he doesn't have to, because we already got his shell. So I'm sure he won't stick to his word now that he got his shell back, and he was only saying that because he was angry about not having his shell. But now he has it, so... No more anger. And I have heard of this Professor Colorado. If you remember the last part, we heard about him from his wife. And so I... I guess I am kind of familiar with him, as this Koopa is asking. And he wants to come with us, and we will all we always have room for one more. Plus, um, Goombario is kind of useless, so now we have Cooper. And, um, he has a more powerful attack in battle. And he can do that on the overworld, which is actually kind of useful. And I'm going to check behind this bush just because, you know, like I said, you never know when there will be a badge or something for you, and it's just good to pick them up. And on the next screen, well, I'll come back to that. We're going to get stuck fighting a bunch of fuzzies. So I'm going to go ahead and show you um, his attack. There's the shell toss which attacks a single enemy, and then there's the power shell, which attacks them all. And I'm going to make a quick work of these guys by doing this. And that does two damage to everyone. Now, I could go ahead and use, um, and kill one, which might be better. But it's going to take me a lot longer to get rid of them if I don't restore some FP. So I'm going to restore my FP. And then on the next turn, we'll be able to, um, kill the rest of them. And there's the timing. And I'll hold this right up to the mic, so you can hear it. So now you should be able to hear when I press the button, and I just realized how incredibly pointless that'll be unless I get this synchronized literally perfect. Oops. Oh well. Regardless, using the power shell. We took out all four of them right in a row. And we're gonna get, like, 16... No, 12. Okay, 12 star points, which is pretty useful. I figured that battle was worth showing because we're showing off a new move. So, you know, it's... it's Like I said, I'm not gonna skip every battle. Now, I'll show you another thing that he's useful for. You can use him to grab badges from afar. That is the HP Plus badges. Kinda useful, but kinda not. 
It's certainly not one I'd get rid of. It uses three badge points, and it increases your maximum HP by five. Um, it's good if you've got a boss battle coming up, and there's a couple badges that you have that aren't really going to be useful. Um, if you can free up three badge points, you can put on the HP plus badge, and it'll be like temporarily getting a boost in your HP. But under normal circumstances, it's not that useful, because if you want more HP, you can just give yourself more HP next time you level up. So it's not the most useful badge in the world, but I certainly wouldn't call it useless. So now that we have the shell attack, well, this guy already got his shell back, it would appear. And now that we've recovered this guy's shell, there's a star piece up here for grabs, which is even better because it actually helps me. Now, I don't remember how to actually use those. And using Cooper's shell does not have the same effect as um, using the hammer. So we're going to do this old fella a favor. So let's see what he wants. He needs to borrow a book from Colorado. And I'm sure he'll give us something good if we do it, so let's go ahead and get that taken care of. And get back over here, Cooper. You're slow. Alright. And... It looks like she's going to... Just go ahead and get us the book. Which is definitely useful, because it'll make us able to complete this quest. And we got Koopa Legends. And so we can take this over to the elder of the town. And we should be good to go. Golden, in fact. And let's see what we get in return. We get... a coin. You know what, I would say it was worth it. Because I think the real reward here is we helped an elderly person get something done that they wouldn't have been able to get done nearly as efficiently otherwise. And isn't that a reward in and of itself? And yes, I realize I completely skipped on the save block. That's because I don't feel it is necessary, and you can also break um, blocks like this. I am going to go back a screen and pick something up, even though I can progress to the Cooper Brothers Fortress right now, I'm not going to just yet, because now you can use Cooper to make first strikes. Um, he can't do much, though. But he can use his Shell Toss against Grounded Koopas. So yeah, but other than that, this is all stuff you've seen before, so I'm not going to show the rest of this battle. Alright, and we now have 88 Star Points, so we should be getting level up fairly soon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you that you can use him to grab this Star Piece. There's another party member who could help you get that, too. Um, that comes later, though. So, for now, that's a better approach. We're gonna go ahead and let this guy spit out six hearts for us. And apparently they do disappear after a while, so we can't make it easy. We only need three, though, so... There we go, now let's go ahead and head to the Koopa Brothers Fortress, because we have everything we need now to get that done. And unfortunately we got hit by a first strike. Nothing new here though, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the battle. And I suppose I forgot to um, start talking again, that was weird. Um, but yeah, so... We finished that battle, and we have another. Alright, and we have 98 star points, so most likely, in the next battle, we will be able to level up. I'm going to go ahead and hit that switch, which will give us 
another sword out bridge, and it looks like we have a paratroopa up ahead, which is perfect, because it's a battle I'm gonna need to show anyway, and I got hit by a first strike. Basically, he's not really any different than a regular um, Koopa. I went ahead and switched to Goombario just because um, Cooper's gonna be useless against these guys anyway. And we can use Goombario's Tattle to tell us more about the Paratroopas, even though they're basically just Koopa Troopas with, um, they're basically just Koopa Troopas with wings, their HP and such is the same, but this does basically allow us to have their HP meters from the very beginning as opposed to having to wait, and that's definitely a good thing. <coughs> I'm going to save that one in the front for Goombario just because he can take him out. and the next guy shouldn't be able to attack on the next turn, and we're gonna get a level up, too. Definitely can't complain about that. And all I had to do was pull off that action command, and I did it, so... Four flower points, four star points, my bad, which allows us to refill our flower points. Which, that extra five makes a huge difference. We were hurting pretty bad um, in the state we were in. So, having done that battle, we're going to hit that tree and get a star piece, like we always do when we find trees. We're going to continue heading off to the right. It's... Can you tell this is a straightforward game? <laughs> um, this wall looks cracked, as you can see. That is something that will be useful to us later, but not right now. Of course, there's a healing box here, which is nice. And here we have a big, looming castle of death and despair. But, we're gonna go in in the next video. However, that doesn't stop me from taking a look around and triggering a cutscene on accident. We're in a world of hurt. Mario's here already. I gotta tell the leader. Red Koopa! And it makes the cartoon running away sound effect, which is always entertaining. And there is nothing for us over here. So, I'm gonna go ahead and head back and save. Because on my watch, I'm at like 17 minutes. I don't know where I'll actually end up, but... It'll be around 15, I'm sure. So that's going to be it for this part of Let's Play Paper Mario. Um, in the next part, we will go inside the fortress and maybe take on the Koopa Brothers. But until then, I'm Homestar92, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.